I've been a portrait painter for many years now, and during the lockdowns, um, the people I usually paint, friends and family, kind of weren't really um, the kind of people I was seeing on a regular basis. So the people I was really kind of engaging with were on social media and online, whether it be Zoom or Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or any of the other mediums. But I was also going on museums, online collections and things like that. So my kind of the faces I was kind of seeing on a day to day basis and those that I was interested in painting were kind of coming from this kind of illuminated light of the screen, really. And um, so at that point, my kind of practice changed from, like I said, from being about the people around me um, and them sitting for me to these kind of found images or a better way to maybe say it would be shared images. So people putting things forward for them me to kind of look at. Um, and in that digesting of it and the mixing of the things from the museum images through to the TikTok files, I just started to see kind of connections and they really excited me. So one of the first paintings I made from TikTok was from a, um, a, a comedy video of somebody waiting for their medication to kick in. And uh, um, I kind of like saw the kind of action of the praying and then, um, you know, instantly thought of kind of classical works, you know, that I was kind of digesting digitally. Um, uh, so yeah, kind of instantly made these kind of quick paintings that kind of referenced that kind of echoing of these movements that were kind of, they served similar purposes, but come from very different times and different directions. Um, the paintings of this time as well, trying to be very light footed with the color, um, because um, it was a very kind of like a strange time, the kind of initial lockdown. So, but this, this kind of really made me realize that instead of having a sitter that I knew, I could kind of engage with an image of somebody that was kind of unknown to me, but also they were performing. Because um, a sitter in a painting often is performing, even if you try to get them in the most casual or, or something that looks casual, it can often be performative. So, um, yeah, that was like a jumping off point, really. So these paintings then became kind of an idea of how would I go around painting the kind of things I was seeing in classical works. I never really knew much about the kind of religious meaning of the kind of Mary crying at the, or the saints, or crying at the base of the cross, or these things. They weren't necessarily part of my, my kind of childhood or anything, but the, the visual uh, experiences I had within these churches kind of like sat with me so I thought of like how would I do this how, how can I actually make these works and it was quite simple to kind of imagine doing that because these people were crying on TikTok some of them were crying because they were feeling emo emotional but other people were crying performatively and it made me think of kind of these p painters in their studios over the years kind of making their sitters go through these kind of emotions and the kind of the truth or the kind of lie or the the kind of the reasoning behind that so so the TikTok kind of element of it I'd like I really enjoyed keeping that in you know there's kind of direct references to that and the, the fact that the, the type and the font is very much connected to the social media platform um, so these people were kind of often acting or or sharing something personal. It was kind of unknown, but then I thought that that's when you walk into a church and you see a kind of figure in an emotional kind of state. You, you don't know about that either. So yeah, um, the, the thing with TikTok as well is that you've often used the camera to kind of light yourself while recording. And that was something I've like kind of played with over years, like from whether it be nightclub portraits and, and the various other things I've done where light is important in the image. The light of a phone often lights the subject so um, that reminded me of kind of going to a church or a chapel and the kind of light emitting from the candle hitting the face even though these kind of these new technologies had let these people kind of in their bedrooms or in their houses kind of make these kind of nonchalant kind of videos kind of for fun um, they were actually kind of playing off kind of visual things I'd kind of seen in in works I'd admired over the years and I often thought about like, how do I engage with classical works? You know, like when I walk into a museum and it's really bright, 
that's not how they would have been seen. They would have been seen like on a, in a flickering, with a flickering light, kind of barely lit. And then I thought about these paintings. I thought about these people with these screens and they kind of link. And then I started kind of testing, putting a candle next to the painting and whether that painting could be lit by that candle rather than um, a normal gallery kind of flat lighting. The idea of this kind of artist slash maker sharing these kind of things publicly and then me being able to translate them into these things that change them again is kind of fundamental to a lot of my work. So like back when I was kind of painting people in nightclubs, I quickly realised I couldn't paint in a nightclub and do that. So I had my friends kind of play the character of a nightclub goer and then uh, that kind of distancing allowed me to kind of talk about the feelings. So this painting is of a TikToker um, called Sam, and she's an actress, and it goes on TikTok to kind of play with the kind of idea of being an actor, I think. So kind of does performances to the camera and then shares them. They are kind of sometimes silly, sometimes serious. This one, she's kind of doing a relatively emotional kind of piece to camera. Um, and I, I've kind of found that interesting because they are definitely kind of doing something active. So I like that kind of, that uh, distancing again. So it went from me as viewer to then redigesting it as something else. So I was trying to convey your various feelings. So these, these drips are all actually absurd considering it's kind of somebody I've never met. But I did kind of like want some of these mark making things to kind of feel an emotive feeling that actually wasn't necessarily present in the original TikTok. Right, yeah. So playing with that idea of like where reality sits, where personal kind of um, engagement sits so that this kind of distancing so every level of the painting hopefully has a kind of distancing from the kind of maker to the person even the viewer when the candle is placed in front of it um, that then creates a kind of a doubt so you're kind of looking at this kind of sh uh, shifting image though you can't quite locate whether it's you know from an ancient time a new place the TikTok references are still there but it kind of it just puts a little question in on the viewer, I think. I hope, anyway. The idea of painting from social media and like found images is not particularly interesting or groundbreaking. But the, the, the thing I'm hoping to do is just continue my kind of interest in portrait painting. So with that, you know, I kind of cons when I very look at a painting, say of a kind of a famous old painting, you know, I'm instantly kind of thinking about where was the sitter? Why did the artist choose to do this? What's the function of this? And within that, there's these people with TikTok are sharing themselves publicly. And by sharing themselves, they kind of set them up themselves up to be sitters almost. To so they can, you know, they're not sharing it to kind of just say something. They're sharing it to be um, engaged with. So TikTok relies on requoting remaking, uh, remixing. And this type of painting, I think, sits within that. Like this absurdity of the kind of tear here in this kind of story, um, uh, like talks about, uh, I'm re reimagining that kind of original content, which is fundamental to social media, the kind of remaking, uh, uh, kind of questioning of that original content.